Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's Thursday, May 27th, 2021. The weekend is almost here. It's almost Memorial Day weekend, and at least the tropics are not going to be an issue, which is exactly what we would expect and hope for this time of year. No issues to deal with. It's interesting, though, because a year ago, I was in Texas with Brent and Mike, a couple of my colleagues. We were doing some testing, tackling some severe weather that had popped up between Austin and San Antonio. We were getting ready to test the weather balloon project down there near Corsicana and west in in Texas. West is a little town north of Waco. And over off the Atlantic, the southeast coast, we had Bertha that formed in like a six-hour period somewhere during this time span a year ago. Nothing like that right now, which is fine with me. Nobody has time for that. If we're going to deal with hurricanes, let's at least do it in the peak season of August, September, and October. Thank you very much. Everybody has too much else going on. Nevertheless, let's take a look at what's happening out there. Not much. I I kind of shifted things over here so that we can look at mostly uh, North America up here and the Western Atlantic on this side and the Southeastern Pacific over here on this side. And generally speaking, not much to worry about at all in the Atlantic Basin. Strong upper-level winds cutting across, and you can see that coming out of the Pacific. Upper-level low spinning over here south and east of Bermuda, which is right there. And then sort of a subtropical jet pumping moisture up into the Plains states. We still have this big heat ridge that's sitting over the eastern United States, and so on the backside of it kind of conjoining up with this southwesterly flow coming out of the Pacific. A big stream of moisture and severe weather. Tornadoes yesterday in Kansas, uh, but still nothing widespread. No major big-time outbreaks, which is good. Um, So overall, the weather is not too bad for the lower 48. Certainly no issues in the tropics. We are watching these areas of convection down in the southeastern Pacific for possible organization as we go forward. But all in all, we're going to end the month of May on a quiet note. It does look like nothing in the Atlantic Basin. So if we shift over here to the Pacific, got this one area that has made it to the 48-hour outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Only a 20% chance of development, however, over the next five days. If we expand it out and look at the five-day overall map here, and you see the first system there and then another one, Both of these still low chances of development. The computer models kind of wishy-washy, waffling back and forth as to whether or not any of these systems are going to congeal and get their acts together. And I'm going to show you something also interesting. I always try to do that for you and not be boring, Uh, but maybe sometimes I am. Who knows? But I'm going to show you something interesting that may be kind of a reason why we're not seeing much development here just yet uh, in the eastern Pacific, despite these two fairly robust disturbances down here. There is some convection. Air is coming together, converging, and the water temperatures are generally warm, but maybe they are not quite as warm as we were thinking. If we look at this, the anomalies map real quick, this updated yesterday, it's always a day behind. Notice in the Eastern Pacific, the anomalies, those are departures from the long-term average. Yes, there are some warm anomalies here, and you know that could aid in some development, but there's also this little cool area here, and so maybe there's just not enough overall energy down there, latent heat yet in the uh, lower part of the atmosphere. We're not seeing very positive anomalies, and in fact, if you look at the eastern Pacific as a whole, let's get me out of the picture here so you can focus on the map. It's really interesting, isn't it? Look at all this area where it's either cold anomalies, we have either cold anomalies in the blues here, or pretty much neutral, right down the middle, and that's it. I mean, generally speaking, the eastern tropical Pacific, and certainly the subtropics up here, all the way to the coast of California, cold, relative to average. And then right next to that, and a strong line of demarcation there, this huge area of very positive anomalies, but not extending into the eastern Pacific. So this the only area right here kind of limited to the southeastern Pacific just off the coast of Mexico. And they've got these little islands of cool in here. And then just the base map color in here, this neutral color, whatever you call that, right there, right in the middle, zero. It's neutral. 
So all in all, the Pacific is neither really warmer or colder than, or, well, it's not warmer, certainly a lot more cold that you see on there. But compare that to the Atlantic, where we have a lot more warmth relative to average in the eastern Atlantic, but the northwest Atlantic's got some cold, some cold anomalies in here. These will all mix out soon once we change the pattern. I mean, it's still spring. We're not even in the meteorological summer yet. But this is interesting to me, how much either neutral or cold we're seeing relative to average in the Pacific versus the Atlantic. And I still think that's going to mean a fairly busy Atlantic hurricane season. And maybe the lack of positive anomalies over here and just the overall moisture content and energy is a reason why we're not seeing much in the way of odds for these two systems to develop. There's other factors involved. It's not just water temperatures. You have upper level winds and other factors, dry air. Who knows? Bottom line, nothing much coming from these systems just yet. If we look at them on the GFS at the 850 millibar level, you see a couple of areas coalesce there in the east pack as we move this out into time. There's four days out. So this is May 31st. This is valid Monday. One area right here, well to the south of Mexico. The other area, way down here southwest of the Baja. So even if these were to develop as the GFS is indicating, and this isn't much, trust me, this vorticity signature, the bundling of the energy there is not very pronounced. And if we move it out to day five, still not much going on. And if we just, you know, play devil's advocate and look at day six and then day seven, yeah, it's kind of meh, right? M-E-H, that word, not much to it. And that's uh, weird, but I guess it makes sense considering that the water temperatures out here, once you get away from this area, are running cooler than average. So there's just not much fuel out there for these systems to work with. If we go back to that map, see what I mean? So if they develop here and head out in this direction, yeah, water temperatures are either right where they should be or a little bit cooler. So there you go. Interesting, maybe, maybe not. I just thought I'd point it out. All right, if you're heading to the beach this weekend along the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast Coast, water temperatures in the low to mid-70s along the Carolinas, still in the 50s and 60s, depending on where you are <clears throat> along the Mid-Atlantic and Southern New England. But right offshore, if you've got a boat, mainly down here off of Hatteras and Ocracoke in vicinity, uh, Charleston, Cape Fear area, Cape Lookout, you go out to the Gulf Stream, and the water temperatures are 80, 81 degrees. And the Gulf of Mexico, pretty neat. Everything now, I, I like it. I like tracking this stuff. All this area along the shelf now, 26 Celsius or higher. So if you're going to the area near Mexico Beach and around to Panama City Beach, Dauphin Island, Gulf Shores, around to the Mississippi Sound region through here, and then any areas, Grand Isle, Louisiana, pretty much this entire area. And of course, all of Southwest Florida, Naples, Fort Myers, Sarasota, down to the Keys. Yep, water temperatures will be at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything else still kind of warming up. We've had kind of inclement weather through the Northern Gulf lately, a lot of rainfall in Texas, and that fresh water drains down into the Gulf through different river systems. And it's just been very active and the Gulf is very, very sensitive to changes in weather patterns. And once things kind of calm down and we develop a big heat dome, I mentioned this the other day, then the sun will do its, its thing, that big microwave in the sky, will heat up that water and the Gulf of Mexico will be as warm as you can expect it to be, certainly by the time we get to July. So I think a month from now, knocking on the door at the end of June, we check back, and this will be a, a, a little bit of a different story, maybe even dramatically different. All right, real quick, lower 48 weather and enhanced risk of severe weather. Let's go back to that satellite animation from Tropical Tidbits real quick. I'm putting this video together at 3.40 p.m. roughly Eastern time. So that would be 2.40 out in the Central Plains. And look, we've already got thunderstorms, and they're linear in a line. Now, that's good in one sense that you're not having discrete supercells, but it's still thunderstorms, flooding, rain, gusty winds, maybe up to hurricane force, and some gorilla hail in there. But it is nice to see at least they're not separating out into individual supercells. It's not to say that they can't or they won't, but when you see them linear like that in one large cluster, that reduces the overall tornado threat 
And, you know, that's what people are most concerned with, I think. Still a 5% chance overall. Wind is the bigger deal. And in that giant cluster there, yeah, you can get some very strong straight line wind. The hail is a big deal as well. That extends down into Texas along the dry line. So just be mindful of that. That's the day one outlook. That's today. Here is tomorrow. The West Texas dry line. And then this little island of potential severe weather in parts of Virginia, raining on all those cicadas that are out by the millions. They haven't reached down here in the Wilmington area. I haven't seen any to speak of. So maybe they just, I don't know. It's just weird. Just thought I would mention that. I've seen a lot about it, that brood X in the D.C. area and the mid-Atlantic states, but I hadn't seen squat down here in Wilmington. Hadn't heard them either. Anyway, it could rain and storm on them up here in that slight risk for tomorrow. And then finally getting into the weekend, things start to calm down a little bit. Still, though, this fetch of moisture that comes in from the Gulf, feeding the dry line in eastern New Mexico that might migrate over to Texas. I will be watching this area uh, especially the upper high plains, let's call it Kansas North, and that would be the upper high plains, the upper plain states, Nebraska and the Dakotas. As we get into June, I'm itching to go out there one more time and try to do some traditional storm chasing, if you will. And I think the pattern is going to be conducive for that. We'll just have to see as we wait for tropical activity. Maybe a couple of more experiments out there in the high plains with some of our equipment, especially the 360 degree camera, these GoPro Max cams that we have, um, I, the storm chasing thing is really neat. And when you get to the high plains this time of year, especially getting into June, you get some beautiful supercells out over open countryside usually and amazing structure. I love time lapse um, and just some other ideas I've got. So we'll see, just something to watch as we move into June. Now, speaking of experiments, my friend and one of our big supporters here from Patreon, our man out there, you're like, where is he? First of all, that's his company right there. It's called Backed Up. And no, it's not a backwards picture. His, his logo is backwards on purpose. It's not a mirror image. Brent is from the Virgin Islands. He owns a company down there called Backed Up. And it's classic. It's a great pun. He does sewage and septic work. Uh, for the rich and famous down in the Virgin Islands in St. John. Where is he? What is he doing? Well, he is out in the salt flats of Nevada and Utah testing some equipment, and I had to come on back home, and I, I got work to do here. I've got a, a show to produce, the Hurricane Highway Season 2, and you know, kids' activities. Brent is out there. He's spending some time away from working real hard. Uh, on his business down in the VI these last few months. And so he's been enjoying a week uh, or more now out there uh, working with me. And then he went out solo today in the Salt Flats, like I said, in Nevada and Utah. This is what he was doing. He was working by himself. This is from our camera that he set up. Launching the balloon and that payload, that delta-shaped payload, much, much lighter than my design and he tested it and it went up to over 96,000 feet over the salt flats of Utah earlier. You can see a GoPro camera there also recording everything from the ground. That balloon is a 600 gram balloon. Don't let the shot fool you. The cable, the, the uh, string or the tether if you will, is way way longer than you see in the picture. It's like 40 feet. He's just holding everything and getting it ready. And we've learned a long time ago, thanks to one of our good friends, Tim Bruno, that you got to have a long tether. And so it's about 40 feet. And that balloon lifted this two-pound payload into the stratosphere today. This is what it looked like right when he launched it. Just a real quick snapshot. And, yeah, it landed not far from where he is, was, was there. And he's actually trying to recover it. As I speak right now, he's walking in the salt flats there heading towards the payload it chimes in off of the APRS transmitter to a handheld radio that he's got and it'll tell him where it is and he just has to go pick it up it's like a big uh, hide and go seek and he put the 360 cam on again we'll see what he got we're doing some testing because we want to capture the eye of a hurricane from the stratosphere from the ground to the stratosphere the edge of space 20 miles up in the eye of a hurricane. We've been practicing this for nine years now, 
We've done it one time for real. That was Hurricane Nate at 1 o'clock in the morning, so you didn't see anything, unfortunately, you know, once it got up into the center there. But we've done it once at night. Now we want to do it in the day. We'll get there. Brent's testing, helping out. We appreciate that. All right, tracking maps. I still have a few. Everybody else, I've checked some of the tracking, speaking of tracking, on the U.S. Postal Service site. And even though I mailed some of these things on the 20th, Several of them still say they're in transit. It's like, are you kidding me? So I guess there's still some backups going on in the Postal Service. We'll cut them some slack. Them, like everybody else, have had a heck of a year. So they'll get there soon, hopefully. And uh, But nevertheless, I do have some of these left. If you want to order one, they are beautiful. 18 by 24, full color. I'll put the link to order yours in the description of today's video. HurricaneTrack.com slash tracking map. And, uh, or, sa sorry, sash track map. Brent was texting me and it, uh, distracted me. You know what? I'm recording this live. It's, I'm doing this as I, right? It's just right here. I'm recording live. What does he say? Uh, east, 0.4 miles, he says. He's got the radio there. Let's see if I hold this up. You might be able to see, see that? You can see that radio. There it is. Pretty cool. He just sent me a picture. 40 degrees north latitude by 113 longitude and then some decimals and other things in there and yes it's a bearing of east and uh tap right there we go so anyway he's closing in on it back to the task at hand tracking map the link to it in the description of today's videos uh 20 18 plus four dollars flat rate shipping and i send it to you in a nice mailing tube because i roll it up so that it is as pristine as possible um, I think I've got about 24 or so left last I checked. So get yours and track on paper the old school way. Don't forget, too, I've got a new podcast out. It's a short form, usually five minutes or less, on Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcast, Apple. You can tell Alexa, play Hurricane Season, the podcast by Mark Suddeth. Every morning, every single morning throughout Hurricane Season, and it's really neat. It's just kind of a digest of what I'm looking at the day ahead, setting the tone for what's coming up. And I tell you what I'll be talking about in the afternoon video discussion. It's growing every day. More and more people subscribing to that podcast, Hurricane Season, the podcast. Absolutely free. No commercials, no ads. It is supported through our Patreon effort and the crowdfunding group that helps support all that we do. So subscribe to that podcast and each morning i give you a little look in five minutes or less as to what i'm looking at in the tropics and once things start to get busy and it's just a matter of time you know that the podcast will start to get more interesting uh as will everything you know how it goes all right well that is it from me for today have a great rest of your thursday afternoon i am on twitter facebook and youtube it's all hurricane track if you're new to youtube don't forget to like share and subscribe all that good stuff so that the YouTube algorithms can do us a favor and help to promote what we're doing and get the word out to more and more people. We have a great thing going, this amazing project, lots of people supporting it from all over the world, and I'm glad that you're one of them just by simply watching the video. It means a lot. It really does. Have a great rest of your afternoon. I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll talk to you some more tomorrow.